everybody, and welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us, it's Ariel and... Raylene. What's ah, up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, for me, it's a rainy Sunday. What's the weather over there, Ray? Ooh, it's actually beautiful. Like right now, oh. I just opened up the blinds and I'm not usually like looking out the window. It's like 8 a.m. right now. We're recording a yes. little early today and I don't usually look out the window of my house at this time because usually I'm at work and it looks right. gorgeous. It's beautiful. Oh, that's and cool. yesterday um, we actually kind of had like a running around day and it was gorgeous. Mm. It was beautiful. Oh. It's been like miserable and rainy all week and suddenly yeah. it's gorgeous and sunny and warm and like, oh, so I'm loving it. Gives you hope the weather's for, good. Gives you a little hope, right? <laughs> exactly. It really yeah. puts I, a pep in your step. Makes me feel happy again, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's tough. Winter is always tough. Um, when I lived in Honduras, because I don't know how much we've talked about this, I guess, explicitly on the podcast, mm. but um, my mom is Honduran, and so me and my brother are half Honduran, and uh, we visited there multiple times as children and teens, but we also lived there for a year, oh, a bit over a year. So over a year of my life um, was spent there when I was 18. And actually a huge good part of our relationship was while I was in Honduras. That's we true. would Vox so much. <laughs> I forgot about <laughs> Voxer. <laughs> I totally forgot about Voxer that Voxer was this app that I've never heard anyone talk about again, but it was... Because, well, because, like, all of the messaging apps now do what Voxer did. Exactly. So there's no need for a separate app. But basically, it just let, it let you send voicemails, like voice clips. Yeah. So you'd, like, send a three-minute clip, and I'd listen to it, and I'd respond with an eight-minute clip, and it was always chaos. But yeah. anyways, <laughs> while I lived there, obviously, they don't have winter in the same sense that we have mm. winter. They do have a rainier season. <laughs> but but when they're... I, I remember living there, and they're like, ah, winter's brutal. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's still 25 degrees oh every day, and sometimes it rains now. And the rains... The, the storms are epic, like, Ooh. huge jungle storms and stuff. Yeah. But... It, it, then like it rains for a few hours and then it's sunny for a few hours and everyone's still in t-shirts and skirts and i'm like oh my god this you guys is are living not... the life <laughs> yeah so i always think about like we obviously have a lot of friends who live in the states and like live in california and i'm like those people are living such different lives <laughs> <laughs> like what is it's it true. like to just have pleasant weather all of the time i've lived it though and i actually found it very confusing i found yeah. i felt like time wasn't moving yeah i like the way that the seasons change here like, yeah i do enjoy it even though i hate snow and i hate the hot summer like i yeah. i like that it changes i like that nothing stays the same forever because i think that would yeah drive me crazy. i totally agree it helps it helps me feel like okay it's like a fresh start every four months I'm yeah. like it's a different era different activities different things are exactly working. Uh, How could you ever feel cozy yeah. if it never rained or snowed? You can't. You know what I mean? You can't like, feel that cozy. You can't it's bundle like up. Different. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> so anything else interesting happened to you this week? Have you been um, doing anything fun? Yeah, I mean, nothing too interesting, but Kyle and I discovered a new video game. Because we've been looking okay. for a video game that was kind of like similar to Stardew in whatever way and something mm. that we could actually play together. And the problem, there's yeah. lots of games like this, but most of them are single player. So he's been like on the hunt and he found this game that I think it's in early access right now. It's like on Steam and it's called Dinkum. It has the stupidest mm. name ever, but it's lots of fun. <laughs> so basically this oh. game is kind of like, I would actually say it's more like Minecraft meets Animal Crossing, which okay, sounds yeah, kind I'm of crazy. It. But yeah, it so like that's the style of happy. the game. And so you kind of, but it's also similar, like you run around trying to like, you know, gather resources. There isn't any mm. um, mining aspects yet other than just hitting rocks. So that's okay. pretty, pretty easy, pretty manageable. Um, and instead of being monsters, there's just like animals because it takes place in Australia you're on like a, a remote australian oh, cool. island is kind of the vibe of this game yeah. and it's lots of fun so like you and this old lady just like move there together and then there's this other guy that shows up that runs a shop every day and then he leaves and so that's all you really have so at the beginning it's very that's much awesome. like you know the newest animal crossing game where you're on a remote island and you're trying to get people to come to your island kind of thing make it really cool um but yeah. it's kind of scary like there's like crocodiles trying to kill you when you're trying to right. build your house and stuff like it's like it's kind of wild but it's really fun 
And actually what's cool about it too is you like create a character and then you can stay on your island or you can travel to someone else's island. So it's not multiplayer mm. in like the traditional sense where you would like yeah. make a farm together. It's like I have right. my island, Kyle has his island and we can visit each other. So Oh, that's cute. It's though. very fun. So I'm enjoying it so far. Recommend it if anybody wants to try it. It's called Dinkum. D I N K U M. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the art right now and I feel like the um characters kind of look like me's. Yeah, like they in look my... a little dumb. Like they... <laughs> <laughs> But in a cute way, or they kind of look like Funko Pops. <laughs> yeah, like they're kind of squarish, but they're kind of like they're very simple. Like the character building is like you get ten hairstyles to pick from. There's like four different eye colors, you know, like it's very easy. Like making yeah. a character isn't the most interesting part of the game. Right. Which sometimes it is. So whenever I say Funko Pop, I remember I went through a brief brief but powerful flirtation with the film Zootopia. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Tell have me you more. Said... <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Zootopia? Yes, I watched it with you when I came to your house. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay, I remember now. I remember. Yeah, it's like back. Um, but in Zootopia, there's a part where I'm, I'm trying to like say this in the shortest way that people have <laughs> that have seen it have will actually remember. But basically, there's a part where the fox character mm -hmm. is pretending to have a little son oh, yes. who wants to be an elephant when he grows up. Yeah, and he's like, my son here wants a jumbo pop. <laughs> He says, Jumbo Pop. It just kills me. Yeah, <laughs> Funko Pop. <laughs> oh, I see. I forgot where that story uh, came from. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> back, to, back to topic. Back, back to on topic. track. Um, I recently heard about this game that is, it's said that it's like a short hike, which as Ooh. you know, I absolutely loved. I and love you it too, absolutely yeah. loved. And it's called Little or Lil Gator. Have you heard of this? <laughs> no, that sounds so cute though. Lil Gator game, I guess is the full name of it. And it looks so, so beautiful. Um, and so that is a game that if people are it looking for, is adorable. since we're in the topic. Oh my gosh. He looks like Link, but he's a little alligator. I know, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, it. Well, over in, in Ariel's existence over here, my only drama is that I'm having an absolute nightmare uh -oh. with my nails. Okay, oh, like it's a nail now? catastrophe over here. I see that they're so, different, so I know that something. They're happened. not different. This oh. is the problem. Oh. You'll, I'll, exp I'll explain. I'll oh, explain everything, Rayleigh. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, back in December, on what, like December twelfth, I hosted yeah. a Christmas party, and I wanted to just sort of like really lean into the Christmas vibes. As you will remember, like I decked out the place, I bought an expensive charcuterie board. <laughs> Ooh la la. <laughs> um, I was like, I'm doing it. I, I wore like a really sparkly dress and I wanted to get my nails done because I always feel fancy when I have my nails done. So mm -hmm. I just got them in gel and I did the, the very hip thing of doing a colorful French, what's it called? A French, French manicure. So it's like yeah. a French tip. Yeah. So I did red little tips and uh -huh. I was like, that'll look cool. And I really liked it for the Christmas party. I thought that's super cute. Yeah. So they really lasted a long time and throughout Christmas and even into New Year's, I was like, hell, this is, you know what? This is kind of working out great, actually. <laughs> okay, fast forward to it's January and I'm like, I want to get these nails off now because I've had them for almost a month. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for a change and they've really grown out. That's the main problem. I like hate most of them that. haven't yeah. chipped, but they've really grown out and I'm like it doesn't, it doesn't look very nice. So I make a nail appointment. Um it was really difficult to make this nail appointment because the place I was trying to book with only did Facebook Messenger, which is oh, that's so wild annoying. to me. <laughs> you can't even call? <laughs> no, well, I tried and they were busy. So I was oh. like, okay, I guess I'll do the Facebook thing. And it, anyway, it was kind of a disaster. But finally, I get my appointment and it's like a week later. And I'm like, okay, that's not ideal, but whatever, fine. Yeah. I then the day before the appointment get a call that, uh, well, I get a Facebook message mm -hmm. that, the, <laughs> that the nail technician has had a family emergency and she has to cancel the appointment. Day of, actually. Yeah. And I was like, okay. First of all, I literally just sent back and I'm like, that's absolutely no problem. Yeah. I really hope everything's okay and I'm sure we can reschedule. And they're like, we'll get back to you when we figure out what her schedule is going to be like. But now 
time's passing, right? And I'm like, okay, now these nails are starting to look really bad. <laughs> and I'm going to a birthday party in oh, three no. days. <laughs> so I really wanted my nails to look nice for this birthday party. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, the birthday party's in Halifax. There's loads of salons in Halifax. I'll just go to one there. I book a plan <laughs> this is so dumb you know this part but yeah i book i book this salon um or this appointment i and it's right next to my apartment which was really convenient mm. it was like literally like a three minute walk nice. i was like oh amazing so i go on the day of the party because it was the only day that they had free i couldn't so i was like every everything <laughs> i tried keeps yeah. getting me closer and closer to when d-day is coming and so anyway i walk into my nail appointment the place is really cute and lovely and i go in and i meet the technician and she was so sweet and i had like really good vibes i was yeah. like oh this is oh, gonna good. be really nice i sit down in the little chair she looks at my nails and she's like what do you have on your nails and i was like just gel just gel so they're not acrylics and she was like what kind of gel i was like <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like, right? Like, because every Whatever gel uses... they usually put on. <laughs> yeah, whatever they use. Like, I don't know what the brands are. I've never even asked that before. Um, I was like, um, gosh, I'm not really sure. I didn't ask or, or notice what the brand was. I, you know, just standard gel. She's like, was it shellac? I'm like, I just don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I'm not sure. It might be. And she was like, oh, gosh, I can't take it off unless it's shellac. And I was like, oh, okay. I don't know if it's shellac. She's like, well, we can definitely try. Let's just try. And she just <laughs> dips little cotton pads into acetone, puts them on my nail, and then covers it in tinfoil. And I instantly know we're doomed. Yeah, it's because with, with gel, you have to like dremel. That sounds really intense, but you have to dremel it down. Like you yeah. have to drill into it. You have to like break to, like, the seal. <laughs> you have to break the seal so you can penetrate in and destroy it <laughs> that way. Um, I'm like, we're doomed. So we sit there for like two minutes, friendly chatting. But in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, gee, what am I going to do? What's the plan here? So she starts to take it off. Like She takes the little things off. Mm -hmm. She just basically taps it. And she's like, I'm so sorry. There's <laughs> nothing we can do. She felt really bad. I felt really bad for taking up an appointment time. I'm shocked, though. She was like, we just we don't have a Dremel tool here. And so I'd have to do it manually. And it'll probably take an hour and a half. And we oh won't God. even have time to do the next nail, like to actually paint them. Yeah. I was like, that's fine. Don't even worry about it. So thankfully she lets me leave without paying, which is nice because, yeah. you know, it was a really, it was later. I was there for four minutes and then I leave and I'm walking home. Like what's the game plan? My <laughs> nails look really bad and I have to go to this, to this birthday party. So I'm like, I'm going to try and take them off myself. Mm -hmm. I go home. I attempt for all of one second. And I'm like, this is going to take five ever. I can't do this. <laughs> this, is, this is impossible. So I buy nail polish and I just paint over them. I just Ew. paint over the top of the gel. <laughs> Which, yeah, I'm like, this is kind of not ideal. But honestly, because they hadn't chipped, it looked perfectly Yeah, fine. it's pretty seamless. The only difference is like seamless. the gap where they've grown out, right? Where it hasn't grown out yet. It's not big So I'm deal. like, okay, for one night, for one party yeah. that's going to be in a dark house, like this will be totally fine. Yeah. And I actually got compliments on my nails that night, which <laughs> bothered me. And I was like, oh, thank you. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> it could be so much better. They were supposed to be. I have oh, tried no. three times to make this better. So, so okay, I get back home and I book another appointment with the yeah. Facebook Messenger place. Oh, yeah. And and here's what this was supposed to be on Friday. Today, Sunday. Yeah, Friday at 5 p.m. was the appointment. Easy. Friday at 520 p.m. I'm in my bedroom just uh, laying in bed. Uh -oh. And I'm like, God, there was something I was supposed to do. Oh, no. I look at my calendar and I see that I'm supposed to be at my nail appointment. And I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's me this time. Hey, it totally just completely left my brain. Oh, man. I think because that day got really stacked. I had a phone call with a friend and then I had a physiotherapy appointment. Mm. And so I felt like I'd already done appointments. Yeah. And my brain was go like, home, good job, Ariel. Chill. You did your appointments. Yeah. Go lay in bed. And then I, so I missed it. So I messaged them and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like I, like literally so many messages, just like, I'm really sorry. Cause I know, you know, that's awful. They don't get paid. Yeah. And I was like, um, I'd love to reschedule or I can come in any time. And they're like, no problem. It happens all the time. Don't even worry about it. They were very gracious. Yeah. And they said, we could book you for the 31st. 
which is two and a half weeks away. <laughs> Why are they so busy? Are there not other places you could go? <laughs> I, I, I'm just like... This is crazy. I can't. I, it's a, I don't know what's going on, but I feel trapped. <laughs> I feel, I feel like, like you I should try and take it off yourself. I am going to. Okay, so good. So basically today is Sunday um, and I had a lot of work this week, so I wasn't like able to just kind of do it. But today is Sunday after we record this episode, yeah. I am going to do it because I have removed gel before. It takes a long time yeah. and it's kind of messy, but it's totally doable. Yeah. I once um, filed all but, of my shellac off because I couldn't, yeah. it wouldn't peel off and it wouldn't, yeah. I couldn't get it to soak off with acetone. So I was like, you know what? This is what we're doing. And I just like yeah. ground my, all the nail polish off and it took a long Oof. time, but it worked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that is my my horror story. <laughs> well, I'm getting my nails done tomorrow, so hopefully it's going to be fine. Good I actually luck. I went in on Friday after work to this place that's close to my work and was like, "Can I make an appointment for sometime next week?" And she was like, "Monday?" I was like, "I can't do Monday. How about Tuesday?" And she was like, "Sure, Tuesday." So I have like the opposite experience that you're having, whereas <sighs> like they seem like super free. <laughs> It's because I'm in a small town, yeah. I think. And so there isn't anywhere else that's like not a 30 minute drive away. That's true. And that's so I point. think that it just gets booked up or whatever. But yikes. Everybody's got to so... get their nails done. <laughs> Everybody's got to look fly, but <laughs> there's only one place to go. Yeah. I think they also only have one nail tech. Oof. At the place. Yeah. So I think That'll she's just it. really slammed. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Anyway, there you go. This, I think this means you should become a nail tech. And then you can be the yeah, second you know nail what? tech. You, <laughs> career pivot, audiobooks <laughs> while I do your nails. There you go. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be so bad, actually. That wouldn't be so bad. That'd be kind of cute. All right. That is our little update. Today, we're going to be doing a fun episode, though, that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. We're going to be bringing back something that we had a lot of fun doing. I don't remember what episode it was, but sometime last year. Actually, yeah. I can't track it down because it's on our website um, under the more tab in the stuff section, <laughs> um, which is where we kind of just put random stuff that we want, you know, that we know will be useful sometimes. Mm. So um, we have a link to this spreadsheet where, because in oh, episode yeah. 159, 159, oh, wow. we rated things out of 10, bookish things out of 10. And um, it was so much fun. And we knew that people might want to play along. So mm -hmm. if you want to play along, like I said, it's linked on our website. It will be linked in the show notes in the description of this episode. Um, and so you can go ahead and rank things as well if you want to at yeah. home. But here's how it works. Very simple. Back and forth, Raylene and I will go listing random bookish things. And then we're going to rate them between zero and ten. Um, I'm so excited. This is so fun. And I, I do track our scores so you can see how what we do compares to what you might give it. Mm -hmm. um, and we do a Raylene score, an Ariel score, and then a combined average, which is the Books Unbound score. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> well, of course. So, Raylene, how about you start us off with your first with your first thing. Okay. This is fun because I actually wrote all of these things down like the day after we recorded our other one. So I don't even really remember what my things Ooh, are. Fun, yeah. So I'm okay. like, oh, this will be fun to get into. So I'm just going to take it from the top. Rate for me out of 10, the feeling of getting rid of books that you no longer want to read or didn't enjoy. So unhauling Ooh. books. This is a very Raylene thing. Yeah. <laughs> a minimalist. The feeling of, I've got to write them down in our little spreadsheet here. The feeling of getting rid of things, uh, but not things, sorry, that's really. <laughs> well, this is a good one. I believe that I would give this feeling, the feeling of getting rid of books you no longer want to read or that you've read and you don't really like and you just like got to get them out of here. Yeah, yeah. I think I would give that feeling, honestly, it's like a roller coaster because at the <laughs> beginning, it's emotional yeah it's, it's hard emotional. i'm like i'm like oh do I, like you have to reckon with so many things you have to reckon with the fact that you didn't like the book that maybe you made a mistake mm -hmm. that maybe you wasted money like you're reckoning with all of these feelings um but then you're like no i'm taking this i'm putting this in my car <laughs> this is going it's in my out car. of here <laughs> and now it's in your car and then you actually have to like what i will do is i will put everything in a box or in tote bags i'll put them in my car and then they sit in my car literally for weeks until oh i finally make it to the bookstore yeah. to try and sell them but once i've actually handed them to a person i have a i honestly have a moment of panic i always have a moment <laughs> what's of panic. in there <laughs> um i'm scared that i'm making a mistake i'm scared that i've annotated stuff 
in there and I'm like giving away my address or something. Oh, yeah. I'm scared that I left an important bookmark in the book. Like I have a lot of of fear for me. Yeah. Then I get money back. That helps the fear go away. (laughs) That's the good part. (laughs) Helps it. And then I drive home feeling a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. So that's my emotional roller coaster. Overall, I'm gonna be honest. I'm only gonna give this feeling like a like a like a six. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. You've got a lot of fear tied into it, which isn't a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I would give the feeling a, a nine point five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I love out. the feeling, but there is that like tiny little bit of am I making a mistake? Like that. There just like is that tiny little voice in the back of my head. But I yeah. I spend so much time like gearing myself up to actually getting rid of the books that i feel like most of the fear is gone like i i, gone. I spend book a lot of time, time being like yeah I'll like i'll like pull out some books and i'm like i think i might want to get rid of these ones and then i'm like i'll just let that like sit for a little bit mm. and then i'm like hmm, yeah like let me do some more research and like figure out why why do i not want these anymore like i have like a whole yeah. like I, it takes a long time for me to kind of get there but then once i do i'm like get it out of here i want to be free <laughs> <laughs> so i do love the feeling of getting rid of stuff it's awesome well, that gives us a combined score of 7.75. Mm. Not too bad. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to start us off with French flaps. Real simple. I have French that on my flaps. list too. So I'll just oh, do ignore okay, that. Fun. No, it's, it was bound to happen eventually. It was bound um, to happen. Physical book items are definitely a good good thing to put on yeah. our lists. Um, so French them. flaps... I have a mixed feeling. I have mixed feelings about French flaps. I feel like they're really cool. They're pretty. They're nice. Yeah. They usually come with deckled edges, which I appreciate. That's true. Um, That's true. But like, are they necessary? Not always. Do they? I was gonna say, do they get in the way? I guess they don't really get in the way. I guess I used mm. to use them as bookmarks. Did yeah. you ever do that? So th- I feel oh, like yeah. I feel like that's I a crazy thing to do now, especially like if, with a thick book. It's like this is a bad <laughs> idea. It's gonna it's gonna deform that French flap. It warps. It so warps it. that temptation, ooh, that temptation is there, which is <laughs> brings it brings down the points. I, I would say French flaps are like a seven point seven five. Okay, I quite like them, but yeah, I, I I don't know. I don't always want them to be there. If that makes sense. <laughs> No, I do know. I totally know what you mean. I feel like when I am holding a book that has French flaps, it feels like a fancier book. Yeah. Right. And usually, though, I think that comes with a bo- at, with an added markup. Like I think books with French That's flaps true. can be more expensive. Yeah. So, which does make a little bit of sense. Obviously, it usually means that the cover is higher quality and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I do feel that it adds unnecessary weight to the book. Oh, um, yeah. Like it's just everything is becoming a little bit hard. We're we, we're getting closer to being a hardcover without being yeah. hardcover, right? <laughs> um, I do find them. I do find them occasionally useful. Like you say, it's only kind of useful for the very beginning of the book mm-hmm. because what if you've only read like 30, 40 pages yeah, that's and you're fine. using it as a bookmark, it's fine. But once you're at like 120 pages, it's like things are starting to get kind of warped out. Yeah. And then you got to switch to using the back flap as the bookmark. Ooh. So I, I do continue. I still do that. So actually I do find it quite handy. Um, I'm looking over at my books to try and imagine what was the last one that i read that had french flaps right but it's kind of a fancier little thing actually mm-hmm. now that i think about it i'm gonna give it a i think i'm gonna give it a 7.75 i just completely agree <laughs> yeah. with you on that one so that means our next thing is also an average of 7.75 wow. that's interesting that is very fascinating but yeah i'm definitely glad that some books have them but i am also glad that not all books have them yeah (laughs) exactly it's like i like that they're there sometimes but if they were on every book i would really not like that (laughs) yeah i totally agree all right what's your next one okay my next one is rate for me the feeling of reading in a coffee shop or other public place (gasps) yeah okay this is interesting coffee shop or other public place okay i rarely do this yeah me too (laughs) really rare you guys (laughs) really rare i think unless you live in a city it's kind of hard to do yeah like reading on the train or something which is not something that you or i do either like i I would count that's different ray i think that should be different i think reading on 
public transport is a whole different okay. experience okay. than okay. reading in like a coffee shop right. or a library we'll or a shop. restaurant or yeah. something. So let's let's do a coffee shop or other buildings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Non vehicular. I, I whenever I have done it. I love it. And I'm honestly going to give it a nine because (laughs) here are the things I know. I know. I didn't think I was going to go that high, but I'm feeling it. Here are the things I love about it. Number one, it feels like I am the main character in a movie. Mm. Like it feels like I am living my dreams. (laughs) Yeah. So it's just very empowering as a reader to be like, I'm out here reading. Look at me. Yeah. This This couldn't be more romantic. Um, the second thing I like about it is that it makes me feel, and this sounds really, really vain, but it gives me a little bit of a feeling of like being very, uh, attractive in a main character way again, not like physically attractive, but just kind of like I'm adding to society by being a person that reads, which is so, (laughs) again, it's like very similar to the main character vibes where I'm just like, look at me. I'm just, I'm living what we all wish we were living, Mm -hmm. right? I'm like... And like I say, that it never happens to me. I don't remember. The last time I think it happened was when I was with you. Yeah, exactly. In, <laughs> when, we, when I was visiting you and we went to that cafe like seven months ago. So it is so rare for me. I wish I did it more. And when I think about it, I guess there's no reason why I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Like I could drive. But it just feels kind of dorkier, doesn't it? To like drive <laughs> yeah. to do that on purpose as I opposed know. to you're out and about and you happen to have a book in your bag so you you sit down for a coffee how parisian does that whole thing sound though? right i know we need to make an effort to do it more because it's a nine out of ten experience that means you really like doing it so yeah just gotta think about it's that. also i think the reason i really like it too is because it feels um like you, i can't be doing anything else mm-hmm. like when i'm at home and i'm reading a lot of the time in the back of my head i'm like oh I do need to take the photos for the podcast. Yeah. Ooh, I do need to be doing this thing for my next video. Whatever. Like, there's always a work thing I yeah, could be doing. I was thinking that Or too. a house thing where you're like, oh, I could be doing the dishes. That's a lie. I don't do dishes in my house. <laughs> Connor <laughs> does the dishes. But you know what I mean? Like, it's like I could be folding laundry or I could be doing whatever. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're at a cafe, you're like, hmm. I'm just here and this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So it's like a very pure reading experience. Yeah. You know what? I'm giving it a 9.4. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I love it. What about you? Um, I think for a lot of the same reasons that you listed, I I mean, I would give it maybe more of like an 8.5. 8.5. Like gotcha. I really enjoy it, but like you said, don't really ever do it. Um, yeah. but yeah, for the same reasons, like I I definitely feel like when I'm sitting in a cafe or whatever reading, like there's nothing else for me to be doing, just like you said, and especially like it even makes me want to go on my phone less cuz I'm like, yes. There's people here. I want to look cool reading my book. I don't want to be one of those people who's just like sitting in a cafe on my phone. So it kind of like the the societal pressure to look cool makes me read more, which is good. Um, But I feel like there are also different kinds of distractions. Like you are surrounded by strangers also. There's people making noise. There's people making conversation. Like it's not necessarily as quiet as it might be at Mm. your home, which is why it kind of loses some points for me. True. Um, True. I also, I don't know, I feel like just sitting in a cafe, like taking up a table for like an hour or two kind of like stresses me out a little bit where I'm like, I agree with that. You know? I do agree <laughs> so, with that. I feel like I have to keep ordering coffees or I'm like, okay, this coffee's gotten low, time to get a tea. And exactly. Now I want a juice. And now, because you do feel like you need to pay to pay. Yeah, like I need to be paying for my time here. Otherwise, like I'm just taking up a table that somebody else could be Ooh, using. Yeah. So I don't know. I really like reading in a cafe with a friend like when we go i don't feel any of that stress at all i think it's just like specifically being by myself it's kind of like oh my god people are watching me people want yeah. my table oh my god there's children everywhere and they're screaming like i don't know <laughs> so 8.5 yep. i i like 8. it 5. but it, it isn't a perfect experience 8.5 i give it a 9.4 so overall that gives it an 8.95 pretty high pretty score good. pretty high score is that our highest score oh no our highest score we ever gave anything was the feeling of starting a new book Ugh, but an 8.95 nice. does tie us with the feeling when you finish a book that's over 500 pages Ooh. okay <laughs> <laughs> that tracks <laughs> um all right here's my next one when you start reading a book and you realize that it doesn't have any chapter headings <gasps> And what I mean by that is either there's no title to the chapter, yeah. but even there's or no there's no like chapter one, chapter two, chapter mm. three. They don't they don't demarcate it at all. It's just like 
lower down on the page so you know we've started a new chapter but they haven't labeled it there's no index okay um that's like a four out of ten for me <laughs> <laughs> i don't enjoy that i definitely like like even just a simple chapter one like that's easy yep. and even like the way stephen king does it which i think is really fun is he'll have like chapter one and then within each chapter there's like little mini chapters almost i love that he mm. does that so like that for me is like a 10 out of 10 way of doing it um okay but yeah, no chapter headings. That's no bueno for me. Yep, I agree. It's but it's no not bueno. like the end I... of the world. It's not like a zero out of 10. It's just kind of like, ah, I don't like that. You know what? I'm going to totally agree with you. I'm going to also give it a four. <laughs> so it overall gets a four. Yeah. I just feel like it's disorganization for disorganization's sake. Like yeah. one of the difficult parts of books as a medium is that they are insanely difficult to um search through right yeah. so if there's a quote that you want <clears throat> you have to just remember where it was yeah it's crazy. or have you yourself have to like make a mark in it and then or write it down or start your own glossary or whatever right like this is why ebooks and stuff are so much better for studying because mm -hmm. you can actually like search through everything etc cetera, etc cetera. so at least the chapters give us a sense of it was in chapter two yeah. Uh, oh, have you read chapter four yet? What part are you on? Well, I'm exactly. On really, seven. for a book club, how are you? If people have different editions yeah. of the book, like makes it impossible <laughs> to figure out totally. where everybody's at. Totally. So I feel like, yeah, I'm gonna give it a four as well. What else have we given a four? The, the closest thing <laughs> we've given a four is uh, books that come with their own ribbons, which was kind of controversially low. We. <laughs> And we gave it a 4.55. I gave it a 6.5, but you gave it a 2.6. I hate ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your next one? Well, this is another one that's probably going to have a nice low rating. So let's see how okay. this one stacks up against the others. Um, reading okay. a book with tiny print and narrow margins and narrow line spacing. Ooh. So like really tight, dense, dense text, tiny font, so even tiny like, print. you know, kind of like bold font too. Like just like all of, all of those things, <sighs> like the most dense text ever. How does that make you feel? So you said tiny print, narrow margins. And what was the other one? Um, and narrow line spacing. That's, oh, that's what I read. Yes. Yeah. Like they're yeah. all too close together. <laughs> you know what? This is a three. This is maybe even a two, but I'm going to go with, the, I'm going to go with the three. Because once I get into the flow of a book, yeah. I usually am fine. I get accustomed and I'm like, whatever. I'm used to it now. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. But I honestly hate it. Yeah. I honestly it's really no dislike it. It feels um, a big part of it. And this is purely psychological and I should just get over it. But a huge part of it is just that I hate not feeling like I'm making progress when yeah. I'm reading. Oh, totally. And with those, with those really dense pages, it's like reading three normal pages, mm -hmm. but it takes you so long that you never feel like you're flipping pages. And yeah. it's like, I only read eight pages today. <laughs> like, yeah. gosh, I like am barely down. making progress. Um, and I understand why it's necessary. Like usually when that happens, it's either because they're trying to make a really cheap book. Yeah. So they're like just making it shorter and jamming a lot mm -hmm. in or making it like really small, like a mass paperback. I find yeah. they're often very dense. Yeah. Or it's like a very academic or like a uh, long biographical type thing. And there's so much to put in. They're like, yeah. this would be an 800 page book. So we're making it a 500 page book. Yeah. But the font Super is going to be fine. Yeah. Mm. What about you? Uh, that's a one out of 10. That's a one out of 10 wow, right yeah. there. Yeah, like I okay. really, really hate it. Yeah, and like similarly to you, like I can get used to it, but it makes like it makes me feel sad the whole time because like yeah. you said, like it makes me feel like I'm reading very slowly. And sometimes yes. I find it easy to like lose where I am and get kind of distracted. Like I'm already kind of a distracted reader as it is. Like my eyes wander. Yeah. I find it like for me, the easiest way to read is honestly like with a bookmark line, like going on each line, but that's like too much work. Oh, I don't wow, often yeah. do that. But for me, like that's how yeah. I, that's the best way for me to focus on reading. Otherwise I'm like, woo, like my, my eyes are traveling. So it makes it even harder when the lines are that close together. And oh. like, especially if the font is small, like I say, it just makes it really hard for me to read and I, I don't enjoy it. Yeah. So it just like, it, it pains me to read books like that. Like I would way rather have a book be twice the length and have yeah. nice, like a big font or like, better line spacing like i would easily be like no give me an 800 page book i don't want this 400 page book give me the 800 yeah. page version like that would be or awesome I'd, 
I would actually even like you similar to what you're saying. I'd be really open to kind of like what they did with um one Q eighty four. Yeah, like, break, break it, it up. up. Give me I, a two part. I love the way they did that. Honestly, that's the version that I read and love it. Yeah, I wish that they did that's... that more often. I really do. I mean, I think the books were meant to be three books originally anyway. Like, I think they oh, okay. were, They might have been. I don't know if they were published like that. But anyway, I wish that they would yeah. do that with all big books. That's um like Harry, or not Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Lord of the Rings was supposed to be one book and it's supposed to be published as one huge book. But they were like, well, because of marketing, because of publishing, but also just because of usability, we're going to publish it as three different things because otherwise it's unyieldly. Unyieldly, yeah. I mean. Um, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, so overall we have given it a two. Yeah. Which means it it's is our thing. lowest rating even lower than the 2.6 we gave to when you carry a book with you all day, but you don't read a single oh. page from it. <laughs> no, that's good. I needed to like set the bar. Like we need to know what's yep. the lowest of the low and what's the highest of the high. You know, we really yep. need to get up in there. <laughs> um, okay. So really in for this next one, I actually have a two parter. So th- okay. it's a, it's these two things go together really well together together and so i want you to rank them separately but i'm I'm taking up two in a row okay i love it the first one is the process of rearranging your bookshelves and then the second one is the feeling when you finish rearranging okay yeah i was like those are definitely two very different things (laughs) yeah so take us through it okay the process of rearranging my bookshelves i would give that a five out of ten five okay because and here's my reasoning i did this recently too so it's fresh um the process is it's a little bit fun it's definitely a little bit fun like getting you know moving them around and trying to figure out where things go is exciting you know thinking oh what do i want to do differently this time this time i did rainbows which was it's always a a fun thing to look at so it's exciting to do you're looking forward to it but about halfway through you start to get tired you start to think (laughs) Why am I doing this? You start to <laughs> wish it was over. And that definitely yeah. happened to me. And I got to a point as well where I was at like the end of my rainbow and the books like weren't fitting. And I was mm. like, how, how is this happening? I took out like 12 Ugh. books. How is there suddenly yeah. less room? And it's just because right. I, I put them on the shelves differently. Like I didn't do stacks. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I just like started to get frustrated. And I was like, I've been yeah. doing this for like two hours. I want to be done. <laughs> so the process, yeah, it's like, it's a love hate thing. So five out of 10. Mm-hmm. The feeling of when the bookshelves have been reorganized, that's, yeah. a, that's a 10. That's a that's 10 a for 10. me. Like wow. that yeah. is an amazing, amazing feeling because I always find yeah. once I've reorganized my books, you look at them differently and they almost yes. feel new. Like it, it almost yes. feels like there are books there that you forgot you had or like <laughs> yes. you don't often look at them because they were in a certain section that you just don't look at all the time or whatever. And so once they're reorganized, like the whole world is different. And so yeah. it's very exciting. I'm always way more excited to read the books that I own after I've reorganized, mm. but also they just look beautiful. Cause I find yeah. before I reorganize, usually what leads me up to reorganizing is like, I've just been like throwing books on the shelves and they don't mm. really belong where they are. And so it makes me like sad to look at them. So once you've reorganized, it's like refreshing and yes. happy making. It's just so good. So yeah. I I'm I'm really similar to you. I am probably going to give I th- I honestly once again I'm going to just match you on both of them. <laughs> I feel like everything you said is is exactly what I was thinking when I thought up these yeah. two categories. Yeah. So the process of rearranging my bookshelves always starts fun. Yeah. It starts with good intentions. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, okay, I've been meaning to do this for a while. I'm so excited to get this done. They're going to look so good." And you start with a little bit of vigor, but then very mm-hmm. honestly very quickly, like 15 minutes in, I'm all, I'm always like, "Ah, oh, I forgot how arduous this process is." Well, like, especially cuz we have so in, many books. Like that's the thing. It's a lot of books and honestly and this is kind of like very basic thing to say but they're heavy they're heavy oh and they're God. bulky and so suddenly your office or, or you know wherever all your books are is full of books everywhere yeah. and like you're, they're hard to maneuver you're stacking things everywhere they're they're kind of it's like a mess but you you know you care about them so you, you can't you have to be careful with them yeah so and and i do really find them really heavy you're always like can i carry eight at a time off the shelf no <laughs> only six it's like they're too heavy they're or they're too bulky or they're slippery or whatever like it's kind of difficult like it's a yeah it is a manual task and so it gets frustrating after a while like you say the feeling of you just want like these 
like whatever 20 books to fit here but one isn't yeah. fitting and you're like okay i've got to shift all this over it's actually kind of a frustrating little tetris yes, situation um and you always like find three books at the end that you're like oh i needed to put those yeah, in i kept finding pink books that i had like put underneath <laughs> yeah. piles i was yeah. like no how am i gonna make yes. that fit and then you know what else exactly. i did i split up my books by unread and read for some yeah. reason i put all of my brandon sanderson's in my red shelves even though i haven't read half of them and oh, so the God, next day i was like why did I do that? And so I had to completely shift everything because I made two rainbows, unread and red yeah. rainbows. Yeah. Idiot. So, so. <laughs> so that, it's a five. It's a five for me yeah. because there is joy within it. It is fun to like get to handle all of your books and like see them and be like, oh yeah, I haven't read this or oh God, yeah, this was a good book. So it is like also a little walk down memory lane. Yeah. But overall, it is pretty tough. The feeling when you've just finished rearranging your shelves i also agree is honestly a 10 out it's of 10 the, best. the moment just that those those fresh few minutes and maybe even like it can last up to a few days mm -hmm. it's just like really exciting and so i don't want to reiterate everything you said but i really agree yeah. with it just gives you that new perspective on your books and seeing them in slightly different orders or, or next to different books or yeah. in different areas of your shelves you're like you're, you're reinvigorated. So totally. I totally agree. So that means, yeah, obviously it's an average of five and an average of 10 for both of those. For an average right, of 7.5 for both of them combined, which I think is pretty decent. <laughs> That's true. It's not too you're bad. Right. Okay. It's not too bad. Oh, man, I have a whole bunch of like negative ones in a row, but let's see what you say to this. Okay. The feeling of wanting to buy a book, but every edition of the book is unappealing. Oh! <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> I absolutely love this one. The feeling of <laughs> wanting to buy a book, but everyone is unappealing. Yeah, this is really brutal. This is re honestly really, really brutal. <laughs> and it gets it gets desperate. It mm -hmm. gets desperate because I recently had this with, um, oh, what was it? With the dud avocado. Oh, yeah. I saw somebody reading it, like I think on Instagram, like I saw a quote from it and I was like, oh, that sounds really great. And then a couple weeks or months later, I watched like an Anya Taylor Joy interview where she was doing a what's in my bag video oh, know, good. from Vogue or something. And we all know how much we love Anya Taylor Joy here. Yeah. Um, couldn't have been a more perfect video. She's so beautiful, but like her bag <laughs> was a Shakespeare and Company tote bag. <sighs> She had books, She's like best. two books in there and stuff. It was just uh, dreamy, dreamy stuff. But anyway, she was reading the Dodo Avocado. I was oh like, okay, God. I really, I need to this get is this a book. Sign. Yeah. So I start looking. No, no good covers, bad mm -hmm. covers, all bad covers. Bad and then covers. I found, I found this one really actually pretty nice looking. I didn't like the font, but like overall it was a pretty little hardcover of Ooh, it okay. that somebody had printed. Couldn't find it. Like, couldn't buy it. Ugh. Like, I tried ordering it from my local bookshop, and they were like, um, we're so sorry. Like, we tried to order it, and it's not in, actually in stock. It's not in print. And I was like, ha, ah! And so it became impossible. <laughs> yeah. I find it really demoralizing. Yeah, because like, I want to read yeah. the book, but you also want to enjoy looking at the book. Like, that's, you know, we're, yeah. we're animals. It's just, like, who we are. <laughs> <laughs> we can't help it. We're beasts. <laughs> um, so I feel like obviously another part of that is knowing that i'm being vain mm -hmm. and that adds to the badness of this whole yeah it makes experience. you feel like why am i like this <laughs> because i'm like if i was a real reader i would just care about the text and it wouldn't matter to me yeah. what the book looks like and i'm like ah this is like bad bad behavior but it is true behavior mm -hmm. i don't like it i don't like feeling like there's no good options and then i also feel annoyed like i'm just mad at all the publishers because i'm like your book sounds really good why did you give it this cover like yeah. that's really frustrating so i'm gonna give this like um a three the only reason it's not lower is because it is kind of funny and fun being on the hunt yeah and you're just sort of like you're a little bit like oh my god maybe i can find one or i like start i'm gonna bump it up to a four actually because i'm remembering this whole this whole element of it where i'm mm. just like i'm desperately on instagram using hashtags of the book's <laughs> title and the author to see if somebody out there has ever printed a good copy of mm -hmm. this i'm like i'm deep in this freaking rabbit hunt yeah um so i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a four because overall it is bad what about yeah, you? <laughs> no, I actually agree. I'm going to go with a four for mine as well. Oh, sick. Okay. Um, because, yeah, kind of for similar reasons. And actually, my experience that I've had with this recently is Carrie by Stephen King. I read this book a long mm. time ago, but I got rid of my copy because I didn't really like it. But now that I'm back into Stephen King, I was like, you know what? I should really have a copy of Carrie so I can reread it. Yeah. But all of the copies that you can get are just 
not cute like all the ones i found they're all mass market paperbacks and they're all ugly i'm like why is there not a nice trade of carry or even like the trades that exist are like a movie cover or something like there just isn't i've never seen a nice one even though they have like stephen king's books have all been reissued in beautiful editions and i i don't understand it my theory they're gonna do a 50th anniversary edition i'm pretty sure this year is the 50th anniversary so that's my that's my theory been that long yeah it's an old ass book um Wow. I yeah, didn't Stephen's been that. writing a long time. <laughs> Stephen. Um, but yeah, I recently <laughs> found a copy though. That was like an old mass market paperback with like a 70s cover and like, oh, it's just so cool. So I like, sometimes it can eventually happen. You just have to be like right. open to finding weird copies too. So I like, yeah. I, that was like the only good experience I've ever had with it though. So that's why I'm like four. Yeah, but I agree. The hunt is fun. It is fun to keep mm. looking because eventually there will probably be a nice one or you'll just not care enough and just be like happy with the weird cover that you have (laughs) yeah it's true but it's generally um... not a fun experience like i love to find beautiful covers obviously there's also the moment where you finally gave up you're like okay well you know what this is the lesser of these two evils you order it and then a couple weeks later you get it in the mail and you open it and you're like yeah (laughs) <laughs> it's, <laughs> you're like, it's still not good okay it's still on a try i was hoping it might be better in person yeah i typed into uh google the worst search terms ever this is really poor googling skills <laughs> i don't know why i did it this way but well mainly because i was listening to you as well and just trying to do it on yeah. the side but i wrote 50th carry those are the two search terms. i love the way you google the one little anecdote that i'll have for the people is when we were playing stardew valley and we were you were trying to figure out how much bok choys sell for or something and you just googled bok choys yeah. <laughs> it was like what <laughs> that's one of my favorites and i was I'll never like why am that. i just looking at pictures of bok choys <laughs> yeah, then you're confused you're like huh? <laughs> but with 50th carry it did come up as the first result yeah makes um, sense. somebody had posted I guess Stephen King has a forum on his website and somebody posted like, when is the 50th uh, anniversary of the book? 1974 is when it came out. But the next result and all the other results are Carrie Underwood celebrating her (laughs) parents' 50th anniversary. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Uh, All right. I think we have time for one or two more. So um let me see i'm gonna do i want to do a fun one ah these are all kind of fun actually (laughs) it's the nature of the game this one is kind of this one's kind of dark this spooks me (laughs) let's hear it we've talked about this a lot especially last year or no even the year before when you buy a book in hardcover Mm. but by the time you read it it's in paperback Mm. (laughs) i'm shriveling up in uncomfortableness um (laughs) Oh, that feeling for me, I mean, even more specifically when I go to the bookstore and see the paperback, that for me is like a 2.5. A 2.5. I'm happy to adjust. I'm happy to adjust the prompt a little bit. I mean, it doesn't have to be what you say. It's for me. It's mostly the the moment of when I am faced with the reality of it. Like I don't often. The moment when you're faced with the reality that a book you bought in hardcover is now available. Exactly. Exactly. Because most of the time I don't realize when they come out in paperback. But for me, it's when I when I see it and really fully understand. Oh, I haven't even thought about reading that book once. I could have (laughs) waited. What the hell is wrong with me? Yeah. And then so I kind of beat myself up a little bit. Um, yeah. but yeah. I don't know. It's not the worst. Like it's not a zero. It's not a one. Like it's just like not a nice feeling, but I can live through it, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give it a four. Um, I don't think it's like you're saying, it's not the absolute worst thing, especially compared to some of these dark, dark things we've been yeah. talking about. Um, I definitely don't find it the scariest, but I do find it obviously a little bit disappointing. Yeah. Disappointing. First of all. It makes me face a couple, it just makes me face a couple of truths. Number one, <laughs> I spent money I didn't need to spend. Yeah, like I could have bought this paperback for $18 because yes, that's how much paperbacks cost now. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. come on. They're never any, they're never like 12 anymore. Anyway, <laughs> I could have, I'd done this instead of like 33 or whatever a hardcover goes for now. So I'm like, that's frustrating. The second thing is realizing that I've had a book sitting on my shelves for a year. Yeah. And I didn't get to it. That's yeah. disappointing. And the third thing is just that I way prefer reading paperbacks. That's so very when true. I see the, <laughs> it's all the same. Well, like, I, I much prefer a paperback reading experience to a hardcover Me reading too. experience. And so when I look at, when I see the paperback, I'm like, 
yeah that would have been nicer damn <laughs> and now i have to go <laughs> <laughs> so now i have to go home and read the hardcover knowing i could have been reading the paper yeah i agree with you all those gonna, reasons i stand by my 2.5 i'm gonna bump it down to a three yeah two point uh, I do still like like a fancy hardcover though, so sometimes it's yeah. not the worst thing for yeah. me. Like That's a, true. a perfect example of this is Orwell's Roses. Mm. That's a book that I bought in hardcover, um, and now the paperback is out, and it is really a lovely paperback. But I think there's something so pretty about the hardcover, yeah. so I'm totally happy having the hardcover of it. Actually, um, I just thought of another yeah, so that, another good reason oh, to. Um, yeah to have the hardcover actually is okay. in a in a case like for me with um the priory of the orange tree for example yeah. i have that in hardcover and i'm pretty sure it came out in paperback before i read it but now i'm happy that i have it in hardcover because i want the second book and i'm going to get it in hardcover mm -hmm. so then they match for series yeah, yeah so there are certain huge. cases where it ends up paying off <laughs> yeah <laughs> as long as you will end up liking the book and hanging on to it it ends up being worth it cuz damn those books are like 40 dollars <laughs> Yeah, okay, so that means that overall we give this a score of 2.75. Yeah, it's not yeah. good. It's not good. <laughs> it's not a good time. All right, what's your last one going to be for us? Uh, okay, <laughs> I don't know how you feel about this, actually, so this one will be interesting. Okay. How do you feel about covers with a velvety texture? Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> that's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Covers with a velvety texture so you mean sort of um like the buttery the kind of it's almost creamy or do you no, mean like i mean like where you touch it and it's almost yeah. furry like <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> like it's like velvet like if you if you pet it one way it's soft but if you pet it the other way it's like <sighs> Gives and me so shivers. This is pretty. This is pretty <laughs> rare, right? This is pretty rare. Yeah, like I'm trying to think of an example, and I can't think of one. So <laughs> okay, okay. So I'm like, I, we are thinking about the same thing. I hate it. <laughs> okay, good. Me too. I, <laughs> uh, now that I know exactly what we're talking about, yeah. I'm gonna give this a. Um, I'm gonna give this like a one, <laughs> and I'm I'm just gonna be real with everyone, and I hope that there's some publishers listening. <clears throat> Bring it on. I love when effort is put into a book. I love when we get an embossed, raised mm -hmm. uh, feeling, or I guess embossment and raising are two different things, but, or a gold foil or sprayed edges, yeah. or there's a lot of beautiful things that can be added to books to make them feel even more um, lovingly made. Velvet is not one of those <laughs> things. <laughs> I just mm. find that it feels so tacky and mm cheap like it makes me feel like the book is going to disintegrate it reminds yeah. me and sometimes they of do. the <laughs> 90s it reminds me of the 90s in a way that i can't ex like it reminds me of like journals we had as yeah. as young like teens furry or, notebooks <laughs> yeah furry <laughs> notebooks and like stickers there was like fuzzy stickers as well Ew, ugh, yeah and, i hate that texture yeah, so much awful. i can't it's just awful and i'm just like it feels like it's gonna go rancid somehow well yeah and, and like, sometimes they also, do kind of like, like chunk off like they don't yeah, last they, forever yeah or they get like because obviously it's a material that's getting glued on and so it's never gonna stay on forever but also it just like loses its quality they can get scratched mm -hmm. they can get dented nah one <laughs> that i give it. that a one i don't see I, the reason that this is so incredibly low is because i actually actively dislike it and i cannot find any positive to mm, it yeah at all and for that reason i give it a zero out of ten <gasps> okay wow it's one of I my know, most hated textures in general wow. yeah like it's it's you know how some people like can't deal with the like styrofoam or like yeah, nails on a chalkboard. Me. Like for me, it's yeah. that velvety texture that is my <laughs> least favorite like sensation in the whole world. It's just yeah. You know what horrible. I can imagine it on Ray? I can imagine it on gift books. I feel like that's when yeah. you can find it sometimes when yeah. it's like fifty ways to go to Paris, and that's where that font is in. Yeah, sometimes it's the velvet. font. That's a good. That's a good tip. Yeah, I think it's usually the font. Yeah, yeah. or sometimes it's just like a square that's like in the middle yes. of. I really wish I could Ugh. think of an example now. I'll have to think of one for when, for our Instagram. Maybe we can, uh, maybe Ooh. people on the Instagram can help us because I know yeah. that they're out there and I don't own any of them because they're disgusting and I won't touch them. So that's why I can't think of any. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that I had to take yeah. us down that path. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's dark. That's really dark. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, though. I, I'm glad that we're, we're going to continue adding to this list um, and to our spreadsheet throughout the following uh, millennia, whatever, how long this <laughs> we're podcast never stop. <laughs> However the heck long we do this podcast for. Um, So again, if you want to check out the spreadsheet so that you can play along and be adding your own answers to this every time we do it, that's linked in the description in the show notes and it's on our website. Thanks so much to everyone for hanging out with us as always. Um, We do have our new pin available that's extremely cute. So that is also linked in the show notes. Um, And we are now going to go record our Patreon mini podcast. Yeah. Movie tub. The movie tub. (laughs) And where uh, we talk about the movies and shows that we've been watching lately. So if you want to check that out, it's at patreon.com forward slash books unbound. So if uh, you want to see that, that's the best way to support us. That's it, man. Yeah. That's the best way. So with all of that out (laughs) of the way, thanks so much for watching. And we will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye.